1 Samuel chapter 1, and this is the contemporary English version. And this is about Hannah. She asked the Lord for a child. Elkanah lived in Ramah, a town in the hill country of Ephraim. His great-grandfather was Zup. So Elkanah was a member of the Zup clan of the Ephraim tribe. Elkanah's father was Jeroham, his grandfather was Elihu, and his great-grandfather was Tohu. Elkanah had two wives, Hannah and Penina. Although Penina had children, Hannah did not have any. Once a year, Elkanah traveled from his hometown to Shiloh, where he worshipped the Lord, all-powerful, and offered sacrifices. Eli was the Lord's priest there, and his two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, served with him as priest. Whenever Elkanah offered a sacrifice, he gave some of the meat to Penina and some to each of her sons and daughters. But he gave Hannah even more because he loved her very much, even though the Lord had kept her from having children of her own. Penina liked to make Hannah feel miserable about not having any children, especially when the family went to the house of the Lord each year. One day, Elkanah was there offering a sacrifice when Hannah began crying and refused to eat. So Elkanah asked, Hannah, why are you crying? Why won't you eat? Why do you feel so bad? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? When the sacrifice had been offered and they had eaten the meal, Hannah got up and went to pray. Eli was sitting in his chair near the door to the place of worship. Hannah was brokenhearted and was crying as she prayed. Lord, all-powerful, I am your servant, but I am so miserable. Please let me have a son. I will give him to you for as long as he lives, and his hair will never be cut. Hannah prayed silently to the Lord for a long time, but her lips were moving, and Eli thought she was drunk. How long are you going to stay drunk? he asked. Sober up. Sir, please don't think I'm no good, Hannah answered. I'm not drunk, and I haven't been drinking, but I do feel miserable and terribly upset. I've been praying all this time, telling the Lord about my problems. Eli replied, You may go home now and stop worrying. I am sure the God of Israel will answer your prayer. Sir, thank you for being so kind to me, Hannah said. Then she left, and after eating something, she felt much better. Lord Jesus, thank you for being present even in our innermost thoughts. Thank you for being our confidant, knowing what is within us even before we express it, for understanding when others don't. Thank you for listening to our every heartbeat. Thank you for comforting us when we are broken, feeling alone, feeling hopeless and troubled. Sometimes, Lord, we are surrounded by those who love us, yet we feel alone because they do not understand the depth of our pain. Help us to stand strong when we are mocked because of our circumstances. Help us to forgive when we are misjudged, as Eli did because he thought Hannah was drunk, when all she was doing was pouring out the pain and longing from her heart to yours. Help us, Lord, to never lose hope in you, to be steadfast in our prayers, to be persistent in faith, to not allow doubt to stop us from believing in your power to grant the petitions of our heart. Hear the petitions of those like Hannah today, Lord. Give them the strength 
and renew their hope. Let them never give up or give in. Help us to be more considerate, more conscientious, less judgmental, more loving and sensitive to those around us. Help us to discern when those around us are hurting inside, to respond with wisdom, to be their angel of love, to be an intercessor because we are our brothers and our sisters keeper. Thank you for your faithfulness to us. As we go through this day, we go in hope, peace, and the power of your love. Whatever we face, we know we are not alone. You are with us. You care, and you will see us through. We give you thanks and praise this day. In Jesus' name, amen.